Hi, welcome back to the Solana for Developers YouTube series. In this video, we'll write a short Python script to help you better understand the relationship between the private key and the wallet address of your phantom wallet. To get started, I'll use the touch command to create a Python file called private key and wallet address.py. Okay, in our code editor, we'll go up here and access that Python file. So we'll head over to our phantom wallet Google Chrome extension. The most important piece of information associated with this phantom wallet is the private key. In order to access the private key, we can go over here to the gear icon and scroll down to where it says export private key. Now there's a warning that I shouldn't share my private key with anyone. However, I'm going to do it in this case because there is no money currently in this wallet. So here's my private key. I'll click copy, head back over to my code editor, and I'll save this for future use. And I'm, I'm actually going to put in quotes private key. And the reason I'm putting that in quotes uh, will become clear in just a couple of minutes. The other piece of information we're going to need is our wallet address. And that is also accessible through this Phantom Wallet Chrome extension. And we can copy it right here. So back to our code editor, there's our wallet address. And the main purpose of this video is going to be to derive the wallet address from the, in quotes, private key. Now is a natural time to discuss why I'm putting private key in quotes. And, and the reason is because uh, Although private key is a fine name to put there uh, on the phantom wallet because it improves the user experience, it's, it's kind of an imprecise name. And from the software developer perspective, uh, it's gonna be better to keep our heads straight if we use more precise language when we're uh, actually defining variables and so forth in our Python file. So what I'm gonna call this is the encoded key pair, which I think is a reasonable name for what this really is. And in just a moment, I'll get into why I'm calling it that. So what this is, is a base 58 encoded amalgamation of the uh, public and private key associated with this Solana account. Uh, in order to deal with things which are encoded in base 58 or which need to be decoded uh, with respect to base 58, I will use this base 58 Python package and I'll put a link to this Python package in the description below. So in order to use this Python package, we will first have to pip install base 58. There we go. And up at the top, I will say from base 58, and we're going to import two functions. The first function we're going to import is b58 encode, and the second one is b58 decode. So this encoded uh, key pair is in particular encoded with respect to uh, base 58. And so to get the actual key pair, we'll have to do b58 decode encoded key pair. And now we're making some progress because the private key and the public key, now I should mention that the public key is very closely associated with your wallet address. So the, the private and public key can be extracted directly from the key pair. This key pair is a bytes data type and in particular it is 64 bytes. So the private key is the first 32 bytes of that key pair. And the way we access the first 32 bytes is via this notation. So colon 32, that'll give you the first 32 bytes. And the public key is equal to the second 32 bytes of the key pair. So we'll just do 32 colon all the way to the end. 
as I mentioned before, this public key is very closely related to your wallet address. So I will type here wallet address. And that's going to be equal to the base 58 encoding of the public key. Well, it's going to be roughly equal. And instead of just doing it right away, I'll print this out and just to see what we can get there. So I'll run Python three and then the name of our file, private key and wallet address.py. And we notice here that we're getting something very close to the wallet address, but there's this B indicating that this is still in a byte stated data type. And so to get rid of that B, we can just use the, the decode method. So we'll run this one more time. And in fact, now this is a string and that is exactly our wallet address. So we have technically achieved our goal for this video, but I wanna make one more comment and that's how to reproduce the encoded key pair from our uh, private key and public key. So in other situations, you may be given a private key and a public key and you want to reproduce this encoded key pair. And that's relatively easy to do based on what uh, we've done so far. So I'm gonna use an underscore notation here. This is basically gonna be the same thing as the key pair, but since we're arriving at it in a different way, I want to distinguish a little bit uh, by putting an underscore there. So this underscore key pair is simply going to be the private key plus the public key. And so Python has this uh, nice method of combining uh, the bytes data type using this plus symbol. <laughs> And our encoded key pair, and for the same reasons, I'll again prefix it with an underscore. So the encoded key pair is just simply going to be the base 58 encoded version of the key pair. And just like before, if we want to get this as a string, I will use the decode method. So print encoded key pair, and let's see what we get. All right, that's good news. So this is exactly what we started with. So in summary, what we've done here is we went to our phantom wallet, we pulled out this so-called private key, and then we discussed a little bit more what that private key really is. And I argued why perhaps a more precise name should be encoded key pair, because what this really is is a base 58 encoded version of both the private key and the public key. So we extracted the private key as the first 32 bytes. We extracted the public key as the second 32 bytes. Then we re-encoded that public key according to the, according to base 58, and we accessed our wallet address. And finally, given the private key and the public key, you can put them together and use base 58 encode to get back to this uh, encoded key pair that we started with. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll write another short Python script to generate a new Solana account. And furthermore, we will use the knowledge that we've gained in this video to import that new Solana account into our phantom wallet. Thank you. See you next time.